Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to do a complete cold and dark again with this aircraft. And I think this will be the last time I do it. Uh, for this aircraft at least. Um, um, because I do want to showcase some things I do that I use um, throughout the planning of this flight while preparing the aircraft. Um, a lot of it is not going to showcase that, but there's some things that I do want to get in there. So, watch as you will. Um, I'm sure a lot of people probably just skip to... Uh, the takeoff anyways, but that's okay. That is not meant for everybody anyways. But uh, here we go. So first things first, I do I do want to say that everything I do is from directly from the Air 320 FCOM. Um, so nothing I do is I would say unrealistic. Of course it is it's different for each airline it's different. Every captain, every pilot of this aircraft would say something different of course. Um, no one will a agree with 100% of things I do, obviously, because uh, there's so many different ways to do this, so many different ways airlines do this, um, and recommend pilots to do it. But I can tell you pretty much every information I have of this is from the FCOM directly, and so that's why, so that's why I do some things the way I do. Um, and also I'll explain why I do cer certain things um, the way I do. So first things, first thing I did is just open up the the left two doors. Somehow ground handling is not working. Somebody commented on my last YouTube video telling me, "Hey, uh, how did you get it to work? Because an 11.3 doesn't work." I'm sure there's an update out there somewhere to make it work, but it's not working for me either. So I just realized that too. So what I'm doing now is just using the flat factor models, which is no big deal for me honestly, but it, it is what it is. But so the first things I do here are the preliminary checks. I do all those checks and of course just like in the real airplane I try to be as realistic as possible. Um, so the first things first is master switches are off, modes like they're normal, gear down, wipers are off, batteries are off, make sure bolts are at least 25.5 and apply one battery at a time. Okay, unfortunately the alright, unmute that. Unfortunately the the uh, but the radar is not functional, but otherwise I would check to make sure it's off and for your wind shear system is off as well. Make sure all exterior lights as well as the interior lights here are off. Um, and if that is the case, I'll go ahead and connect the ground power unit. If it is connected, if not, I'll just connect it and turn it on. I'll then make sure all displays are on. Brighten everything up as it should be. And all I do is wait until everything is configured. Um, it takes about 90 seconds for the complete reconfiguration ever since the battery starts so I know that this also takes 90 seconds so as soon as the, um, the standby attitude indicator the standby yeah basically attitude indicator uh, reaches or is, has completed its initialization as you can see in 33 seconds then I know the complete aircraft is set up and I can continue with my flows so how I turn this on yet is I have okay so all that is on. Let's make sure everything is on that I want on for now. Uh, I don't worry about radios at the moment. Um. I also just recently installed version 1.2 of BSS. It came out uh, apparently like two days ago. Um, so. All right, that's set. The next thing I do is the AP fire test. Push the button, make sure the lights illuminate. That's the warning and all the indications. That is checked. Cockpit lights, parking brake is on, make sure the indication agrees. And the acupressure I check. I want to charge in the green state, so if it's not, I know I'll have to recharge it with the electric pump. But before I do that, of course, I want to make sure that our flaps are in the up position, the spoilers are retracted as well. And then our probe and window heat is in the out of position as well. Once that is complete, I contact ground, blah blah blah, let them know, and charge the hydraulic system. Okay, we're good there. And the acupressure is checked. Uh, I do want to check one thing. I want to see if you can actually deplete it now. Nope, they still have a model of that. Okay, that's fine. Once that is done, I check, uh, do a quick overhead scan, make sure the fault lights are normal, make sure this is on auto, this set is required. 
check that our fault lights here on the electric panel are normal, everything's good there. Our cargo temperature is good, and our ventilation lights are extinguished as well, so meaning they're on. And that is checked as well. We now go down to the uh, to the ECAM, check any messages, or recall in case there's anything hidden. Hold for three seconds, there's nothing else, and that is a normal state. So we just clear that message, click twice on it, and it should be completely cleared. And you'll see that the status indication on the upper ECAM displays, letting us know that, hey, there's something there. But we know what it is. It is uh, TCAS. So if we just go to status, you can see TCAS. Of course, there are more indications missing, which are not implemented at the moment, but um, that's fine for now. And exactly at this time, that's when I start loading aircraft. So what I do is I call cargo, uh, sorry, the fuel. I also open the cargo. and and if the door hasn't been opened yet, I'll go and do that as well. And I refuel in real time, so I set power here. I check my flight plan, and it tells me that uh, for this flight, I require 7.6 tons. I did not mean to do that. So I do uh, do 7.6 in here. You can see refueling is indicated there, and then I select control, and we'll start refueling in real time, as you can see here. Okay, then I load my passengers. Um, today we're expecting 131, which is pretty much a full aircraft, about five people missing. I set that, and then cargo today depending on top or according to top cat is 10705 as discussed earlier it's quite heavy as well and then what I check here is yeah we are quite full so I just fill up the front here and then go back here but I don't think it's gonna do a lot so, down 2.0. We'll see what our field does to us. I'll go ahead and set that now. Alright, so the fuel is balancing us out a little bit, which is good. So that's set, and once our f all that is set, I do the overhead scan. So a cruise supply would normally be off, so turn that to auto. Ground control I would check, but not simulated. Fault lights are normal, everything's good here. So make sure captain. And align the IRS. One, two, and three. And then make sure the on bat light extinguishes. Perfect. Make sure we're actually refueling, which we are. Strobe lights coming out to nav lights system one. No smoking auto. The reason why I don't do seatbelt signs yet is because we're still refueling and so those seatbelt signs are supposed to be turned on unless refueling is completed. Emergency exit lights arm. Everything here is fine as well. Make sure this is on the auto. Everything is normal as it is. Okay, uh, we have so pack flow is normal. It would only be set to high if I think our standard outside air temperature is at 35 degrees or higher Celsius, and we'll set it to low if our passenger count is below 100. For some aircraft, it's 115, depending on how many passengers are actually in the aircraft. I'm going to go and set these a little bit lower here. And that is good to go. Should this is out of fault lights again are normal. Everything here is checked as well. I'll do the e light -like test. Make sure batteries are actually uh, functioning correctly. So turn one on. So make sure our amps are below 60. That is checked. Yeah, fuel pumps again don't come on because they're still refueling. So if you fire test, uh, yeah, sorry, engine fire test. Checked. So one and two. Okay. Audio switching set to normal. That's checked. Everything else here is good to go. PA is tuned and about halfway. And then it's good as well. Make sure all lights here and guards are closed. Lights extinguished, which is good to go. Now go over here, set anything here we can, make sure our time, UTC time is good, our date is 12-16-2018, that's perfectly fine. 
and every, every timer is reset. Let's check nose steering is on and everything else here is good to go as well. Perfect. And now the FMC this is where a lot of this information from charts and all that comes in to play. First things I do is go to data, position monitor, navigate, select, and deselect any navigates that are in the real world un not functional. Um, so this is provided to us here um, by, through PFPX. If you have the subscription, um, it will tell you any notams that are required. And um, so it will tell you anything, any that anything that is not functional to work, uh, walk, watch out for. Um, and I'm just looking for VORs that are not functional currently. Here it says, for example, taxiway Zulu not available for aircraft with a wingspan greater than 36 meters, okay, due to safety. All this, all this is also documented in the charts. If you have good charts, for example, from Navigraph, um, they'll also give you usually that information as well. But I do not see any any mm, nav aids. It looks good so far. And I also check our destination. Here we go, see if they have anything and I'll enter that as well. Okay, due to the outage of Whiskey Sierra November so whiskey is here in November, I do select. It's not in the database, it's an NDB anyways, that's right. I'm gonna say it was an NDB. Yeah, so if it's an NDB it won't work anyways. Due to outage of yeah, it's an NDB. So that's fine. LVV VOR though, however, is out of service as well. We do select that and we make sure it's the correct one. And I believe it is this one. And yeah, that's that is it. So th th this means that our FMC will not select this automatically in our rad nav page. Next we'll go back to aircraft status, make sure our engine type is good, our Jefferson our nav data is up to date. And uh, once that is done, in it, echo in your Delta Whiskey to echo Delta Delta Hotel. Alright, IRS in it. This is where the chart comes into play that has the coordinates. Um, I just have to check where we're at. We are currently at 202. So for 202, here, 201 through 205 is are those coordinates. So I go here, make sure those coordinates are set. Which is 53257. You'll see a lot of it actually corresponds to this as well. This is just the airport reference. Um, and then this is 14.9. So, as you can see, it is often, if you don't have these type of charts, it's often very good to change your latitude and longitude to your actual GPS position and then align on ref. Then go to alternate, which is Echo Tango Hotel Sierra. Flight number today is um, sorry, it's had a it's uh Erlingus what did I say thirteen uh forty seven, right? Yep, thirteen forty seven. Cost index today is 25, cruise level 350. Go to the second page and I enter our estimated zero fuel weight, which I take from PFPX because PFPX is not 100% accurate. Um, only this aircraft is. Uh, this aircraft knows its own weights better than PFPX does, so I just use this zero fuel weight as planned. 62.5, I enter that in here as a standard. And uh, if you're wondering why don't you just might as well put in the in right information right now. Um, I don't do that because in a real airplane you would know it at this time as well. So I try to stimulate this information I, I would know in the real world. I would only know estimated, so I'd put that in just so the FMC knows and can calculate the top of cruise and all that information and give you an estimate on how much um, time you need. And I also put in the estimate fuel. Uh, PAPX wanted us to have 7.6, so I entered 7.6 and I make sure everything here is entered perfectly. 
and if it if it corresponds and it is something if there's something wrong with the PFX calculation I know I need more fuel or less fuel even but I mean sometimes too much fuel is not good either but if it's too little fuel I know I need to refuel and I know zero fuel zero fuel weight center of gravity you can't really um, predict that too much so then I go to flight plan put in my departure today is runway 28 by the Liffy which is the Kish 1 Bravo Liffy transition insert and this is where things get kind of boring. Airways, I'm going to go and make this quick and type everything in. So, UL 975. Wall. M16. Dallas. Dallas. Lima 603. Lamzo Uniform Zulu three zero four Coroni Uni Uniform November eight seven three Joint Uniform in US Sierra Tango Uniform Papa Seven two nine er Delta Hotel Echo Uniform Lima six one nine er Golan Lima Lima six one nine er Astor Tango 904 Rib Zone and then in Europe we uh, usually put in the uh, arrival in in uh, already even now so we have the ILS 15 and the Rib Zone 4 Alpha Lima Bravo Victor and enter GPS primary we go ahead and clear out on both sides and uh, also at this time, but unfortunately I don't think it's functional at this time, I would put in fixed information for our departure if there was anything I would have to look at. So I'm checking my departure charts right now. Um, for example, Dublin, if I wanted to put in a radius of 2 nautical miles, it's not functional. They haven't simulated it yet. Unfortunately, can't wait until they do. Um, a lot of things missing in this aircraft that I want in here so badly. Um, it needs to be in here, but isn't yet. All right, for Navrad, uh, we'll need um, Dublin for our departure. We'll manually enter any information that we need for sure. So, uh, Dublin, VOR, and that is it. So, then we go back to init and we put in our wind information, which is all taken from PFPX as well. So if you look down here, if you have up-to-date weather, you can see climb, and then some waypoints in descent. So um, on the ground, you put in climb, and then for the waypoints, for each waypoint at its level, I'll put in its winds as well. I don't put in every waypoint because you could. I just put in these ones because these are the, um, in time, the most uh, relevant wind changes. So that's what I do. So climb winds at 2-2-2 at 2-3. Level six zero two two four at twenty nine at one three zero two two nine at thirty seven at two hundred two three four at thirty eight at two seven zero and our last one for climb is two two eight. At 29 at 340. Insert next page. Our first waypoint is Zapox. There it is. And that'll be winds 216 at 25. Next is Doras 24129. 
and Nito, two for 429. But, um, now you're probably wondering why are you doing this. Um, this actually, and this actually is implemented in this aircraft, is putting in wind data actually calculates a as accurate as possible uh, top of cruise and top of descent. So you can actually, so, uh, you actually do get quite a bit of benefits from this. And also calculates your, uh, your, uh, your fuel and all that. So once I'm done with that, I go to performance and I enter information. I am assuming again, so 5,000. And to know, I'm, I'm not done. I just put flaps and I do not put uh, my, uh, my, uh, trim because I don't know my trim. The center of gravity is still changing through fuel, even though we might be done with fuel by this time. But So, we check my PFPX uh, information through Topcat. It's giving us flex 51, flex config 2, and our estimated V speeds are 138, 140, and 143. And you know, and the reason why I do this is because once you set in V2, You'll, you'll be able to dash your speed, um, at least in this aircraft. Um, I think in the real aircraft you could already do that, even without V-speeds, but in this aircraft you need to have your V-speeds to be able to dash these, dash your speed. And at, since we checked earlier, we know we're doing the NADP, NADP uh, 2 departure, which is just 1,500, so we can just enter that in as well. 1,740. Well, it's 740 because we are 240 feet above ground, or above sea level, so we add that in there. Although, yeah, we have to fix our uh, Q and H. I'm gonna go and enter that now. There, you can see also around 240. Okay, so once that is done, I go back to init. Uh, actually, I do secondary flight plan if there was secondary flight plan that we could do. And uh, when we could, there's an engine out. Um, usually, you won't have to program that because this actually, the real airplane already is included in your departure. There will be an engine out procedure already implemented just in case. Um, but because I don't have that at the time, I use it as a secondary, so I copy active. I enter new destination of Echo and New Delta Whiskey. I'll put in the runway that we're arriving, which will be 28. And then I put in all the waypoints that it's wanting us to go to. So our next waypoint will be Oscar Echo, which is in 6 nautical miles. After Oscar Echo wants us to right turn to Rockna. So I put in Rockna here. And that's when where it wants us to hold. So that's all I put. And if I know the altitude we want, we should be at. I believe it's going to be five thousand. So I put in five thousand as an alt constraint. And that is done for our secondary. Then I go back to init and the B page, knowing that I still have to fill in information. I'm not done with that yet. All right. Let me go down here. Turn on the radio. Tune in anything I need to tune. I don't know why my street brakes are out. That's not good. Okay. And check all the switching uh, switches here. Are in the normal position. Everything here is fine. It's good here. Reset to zero. Parking brake is on. Gravity gear and extension is down. This is the flight plan. Radio two on. And I'll go ahead and pre-tune one two two decimal zero. Here. Clear this. Put two two zero one. And because we're in uh, Dublin, they do want us to. They do have ASDX, so I put on a TARA for now, and just on auto, so it's not on um, at the moment. But yep, that's one thing we can do. Then we do. We go here. And this information, so we can go and set. Aidus and we'll listen to it now.
Echo. India. Delta. Whiskey. Airport information. Foxtrot. One, three, zero, zero. Zulu. Weather. Wind. One, five, two. At four. Caution. Wind shear alert. Five miles south, southwest of Echo. India. Whiskey. Tango. Visibility. One, zero, thousand. Sky condition. Few clouds at two, thousand. Ceiling. Five, thousand. Broken. Temperature. Seven, dew point. Four, Q and H. Zero. Niner, niner, niner. Advise on initial contact. You have information. Foxtrot. All right, so we heard there's wind shear alert about five miles out. Uh, QNH 999, which is set. I just have to check our initial altitude. Um, transition altitude here is 5,000, it says on the chart. So I set 5,000, and everything else here is inf set. So once all that information is sent, we'll go and request I for a clearance, and if they tell us anything different, for example, our initial altitude, our, uh, our squawk code, uh, we'll go and enter that in and then we're done with that. So, the next thing I do is, um, because we're only one person, uh, we don't have a co-pilot checking his stuff, so I usually check the co-pilot stuff first, and then I check the captain's side, because they both do their flows starting here with the oxygen mask, which is not simulated, so we can't test that yet. Um, and going through this whole panel, just do a quick sweep. Same thing with the captain. So let's start with the first officer first, and what I like to do is, because um, they usually check the flight plan at the same time, making sure all waypoints are in, I just do the flight plan check um, with the cat, uh, with the first officer's side first. So I, I would do the oxygen test, uh, check the GPWS system, make sure climb and nav are blue, speeds are set, initial altitude set, QNA just checked in our heading and attitude and altitude, all that, flight director 1 and 2 are all as they should be. Same with this, everything here is good to go. If we need a terrain, go and turn on terrain. Um, um, if the captain flying is the first officer, then he'll obviously put on that information that he needs the most. So if weather is the big deal, he'll, he will turn off turn terrain, he'll keep it off. The captain will turn on terrain, and then uh, the, the first officer will have weather radar set as his primary, but of course it will not be turned on yet. But he'll keep terrain off. But because we're the captain flying, we're the captain, we're the pilot flying, uh, we would have weather on our side. Fortunately, weather radar doesn't work, so there's no point. We could just use terrain on both sides. So, fly factor, please hurry up with all those updates. And then we check again, just do a quick sweep again, and then we go down here. We finish at the FMC, and we check our flight plan. So, we go to plan, and we'll just go in here and make sure that our waypoints are all, all as they should be. And there's nothing out of place. Our, also, our uh, altitudes are checked. Our uh, restriction altitudes. Let's make sure anything given to us here is fine. So what we could really do here is we could just get rid of Lima Bravo Victor. Of course, in the real world, you wouldn't do that. You would wait until ADC instructions. Um. But I'm going to go and do that now, and so that gives us a much easier plan, and uh, everything else looks good. So, keep that on flight plan. The captain, uh, or the pilot not flying, will have it on flight plan. The pilot flying will have it on his uh, performance page. We then go to the left here, and do the captain side. Do the same thing, check the same thing, make sure all the information is parallel to the, ca uh, the first officer's side yeah, as well here. If you need a terrain, you'll turn on terrain. If not, you'll turn on weather or keep weather, make sure ISIS, the ISIS is set, everything else here is good. And then, then we'll again end up with the FMC. Before we do that though, uh, what I usually do is I make sure that our fuel is entered, which it is, and then uh, turn this off. I have to select get, just so we get the actual weights. I remove it, seatbelt sign comes on at this point, and our fuel pumps go to auto at this point and then I finish it off with the FMC and enter our actual weight so at this time I pretend that our ground personnel has like hey we've got all your information now fuel is set passengers are on board cargo is on board here's your weight information and so I get this real information from here so our zero fuel weight is 62.95 so I do 63 our zero fuel weight center of gravity is 60 or 36.95 Eight out of range. What is out of range? I need to put zero. Is it really out of range? Sixty-two point nine. 
Oh. 60. So we're out of range. It's 2.8. 2.8. Seven. So now we gotta see. I've never had this issue. So we're really at our limit. Sixty-two point five is really our limit. So it looks like we'll have to uh, throw something out. Do we see two point? It's a refuel weight being sixty-two point nine. So we gotta get rid of about four tons. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Four tons. What I'm saying. Four hundred uh, kilograms. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just going to get rid of all of this in the back right here. Set that, and that should give us a better trim as well. So, our zero fuel weight now is 62.3. The zero fuel weight center of gravity of 34.2. And our actual fuel is still 7.6. So that gives us inf updated information. We then go to our performance. We enter our trim that it's given us here down 0 0.8 and this will tell us hey update your takeoff data and that's exactly what we're going to do using this we already enter all our information here it's still valid it's still exactly what it is but our takeoff weight is going to be here gross weight minus about 200 so 69 700 takeoff calculator and that's what it gives us and that's what I'm going to enter in so our flex temperature now is going to be 46 Oh, never mind, 45. 138, 138, and 140. So that is updated. We can clear all that message. And now we know that we're pretty much ready for pushback. And at this time, I start the APU. So I select the master switch to on. I'll wait till the APU page displays, and then I start the APU. Uh, if you've seen my previous videos, you know I've used XEnviro for the longest time. And I pro some of you might be wondering why I change. Uh, XEnviro is quite a nice looking add-on, and I totally agree. And version 1.1 is looking absolutely beautiful. That I bet uh, once version 1.1 comes out, I'll be tr going back to XEnviro um, instead of Active Sky. I just like Active Sky because I know there's their uh, wind information is very reliable. It's pretty much one to one to the real world all the damn time. Whereas XMR, I had wind issues. Like I was pr pretty much flying the same route with somebody. They were maybe ten miles ahead of me or something, and we had completely different wind readings. Um, mine was coming like from the from the back. His was coming from the front. So I was in, I ended up catching up on him, which is not good. Whereas I I know Active Sky is very accurate, and. Uh, yeah. Okay, APU is available, so we can go with APU bleed and external power can come off. If we did need the second pack to save fuel, I would go ahead and turn it off as well. Um, usually I put weather into a factor, so if it's cold outside, I'll keep the pack on. Um, and uh, if it's just the right temperature, I'll turn it off. Also, if there's a long taxi, I'll also turn it off with a decent amount of temperature outside, just so the passengers are still happy. But because it is quite cold these days, um, and the taxi is not that long anyways, I'll keep pack 2 on. And at this time, we'll go ahead and close the cargo doors, close the passenger doors, and disconnect anything there. And we're pretty much done with this complete thing here. So I turn that off, and we're ready. So, if the outside air temperature was deg uh, 0 degrees Celsius or below, which it is not, I would turn probe heat on. Um, but that's fine, which is not, and now we can do the force our checklist above the line, which is logbook security check checked and entered, departure briefing is completed, copy preparation is completed, cam signs are on, auto, and armed, and gears are nav mode. Feels released with 7.6 tons, barrel ref is 999 times 3 set, and parking brake is on, which it is, and verified here. Okay, with that, I go ahead and call better pushback. Like start push Ground back. to cockpit, please show me where you want to go. Accept that. Ground to cockpit. And once Toe he comes, he can come on. 
Actually, the beacon comes on. Who knows who's steering distant gates? Uh, I know that the. Uh, I know as a fact that the plugin will tell you it knows where the steering disengaged is checked, but if it wouldn't be, then you know the gear pin is not inserted and you would have to turn the nozzle steering manually off. And you'll see the message then appear. Um, or you should once you start moving. But we don't need to do that because I know a better pushback does it eventually. Um, windows and doors windows, doors and slides are closed and armed. Make sure they're all armed here closed and make sure also our doors here are closed, or our windows here are closed and our door here is closed. Beacon is already on, and uh, thrust lever is idle, so okay. I just All move doors my physical levers one more time. Ready to connect. Make sure flaps are up, spoilers are retracted, that's checked, chocks are removed, parking brake set is required. So once we start pushing back, that's when I'll do the before start takes below the line because uh, there's one item in there that uh, talks about no just steering disengage and we'll get to that in a moment. So now we're just waiting on better pushback. And I'm actually gonna turn this up a little bit. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Releasing parking brake. And now you'll see the nose is starting to engage. And you may start engine. Indication to appear. And we'll now do the checklist below the line. Takeoff data is set. Beacon is on. Nose will steer and disengage it is checked. Windows doors and slides are closed and arm pocket doors closed and locked. So before our checklist is completed, uh, we can go ahead and push back. So select the one selector two ignition. It's your engine no, oh, never mind. Misreading that. And once we start our turn onto our final taxi line, taxiway, I'll go ahead and start engine number two first. Okay, number two is being started. Air, engine 2 is available, that's good, so we know we can start engine number 1. And 2 has successfully started. Now I'll go and start engine number 1. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Available, so engine, both engines have successfully started. So we can select our mode selector back to normal. Make sure our display so shows the wheel ECAM. Okay, checked. If you click on so off, engine and TI is required, so we'll turn it on. Master will be on the off. left. Spoilers we'll are flaps set flight. to 1. Actually, two more departure. Flight controls are trim set to down 0 0.8. Checked. Rudder trim zero. You can status is checked. Everything is normal. And our after start checklist 
subject are okay, we're clear to the left. Anti ice is on, pitch trim is 0 0.8 down set, rotor trim is 0, ecom status is checked. So now we do taxi clearance. Once we get our taxi clearance, we'll go ahead and turn on our nose lights. Parking brake coming off. Elapsed time starting if A cars is not installed, which it isn't. Uh, and we'll start taxiing. Do a brake test. Let us check. And we'll go ahead and taxi out. So we can literally just taxi straight out. Transponder coming on. And then once we taxi straight. We'll do a flight control tech check. This is one of those things where pilots will say differently. Um, some airlines make you do them before you start uh, tar start taxiing. Some, well, at least Airbus says to do it during taxi. Um, so I do them during taxi. About to clear runway. We're pretending we're cleared to clear. We're, we're cleared to cross. So I'll turn on the required lights. Approaching three four. Checked. Although we're not departing one way, uh, one five, so we're gonna turn left here. Which, yeah, that was a mistake on mine. See, so, yeah, I'm I'm used to departing from the other runway, other side. But that's fine. We turn left, even though taxi line does not suggest so. We'll do so anyways. All for immersion, right? <laughs> okay, so let's go into the uh, checks now. Let's come back to normal. So full right, check, full left, check neutral, check, full up, check, full down, check, neutral. Now for those who have rudder pedals, just click this. Rudders full right, rudders full left, neutral, and let go. And check, flight controls are checked, so outrake and now come max. And we'll go ahead and start turning just so we have a better angle. at all. Okay. So we'll just backtrack the runway. So, we'll go into the before start procedures. Or if our, our runway is checked and revised, runway 2 is fine. That's exactly what we want. Flaps are set. Take config 2, V1, V, R, and V2 are set. 138, 138, 140. Tech flaps 2, down 0 0.8 is set. Flex 4, 5, transition 5,000. And our noise abatement depart procedure 1 has been acknowledged. So we'll just hold short right here. Okay. Runner shell altitude is set. Our speed and heading are dashed. Flight direction are on, flight instruments are checked, FMA is checked, radar would now be turned on, but we can't. So, that doesn't matter anymore. Still our tables. Do our takeoff config test to make sure to take off no blue. That is checked, and we now do before takeoff checklist. Above the line, takeoff briefing completed, flight controls are checked, flight instruments are checked, flaps are 2, plan 2 set, and e command will take off no blue. We're now cleared to line up, so we'll go ahead and do that. Strobe lights coming on, when we turn off, on, landing lights extended, and those light to take off. Approaching, Eyes three, off. four.
clear for takeoff. So on we'll go. runway one six six. And heads on. Feet remaining. Set our timers one two and three and pause this timer and give a cam signal. So the low line cam signal is given. Because TARA packs are off. So we're cleared for takeoff. Probably a bad lineup. Yep. Alright, so 50% initial. On runway, two, eight. Stabilized. Flex time SRS runway auto thrust blue. Later, pack two. I'm going to throw an autopilot at this point. About to reach the clouds. Flap one. Checklist. Any gear is up. Flaps are retracted. Packs are on. Eco memo is checked. And just to make sure. Turn this down just a little bit. Shadows are still kind of broken. Transition altitude is reached. Falling. There's. Okay. Standard. One, two, and three. So we'll go to 10,000 feet and then we'll turn off anti-ice.
It tends out to do quite a few things. The internet to us cannot come off. Um, we don't need any more landing lights coming off. Send this to an airport. We'll increase our range here. Terrain comes off. We're going to extend our stuff here. Alright. Now Red will clear any BORs that we manually entered if we don't need them anymore for our departure and we'll delete our secondary flame plan. We're back to performance on this page. Here we'll go to progress, check our optimate flight level. It says 364, um, but we're going to stay at 350. Alright, we'll also adjust our weather, radar tilt, etc. Um, but that at the moment and uh, if we don't need uh, if we think turbulence is no longer in our way seatbelt sense comes to auto and passengers are now released So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I know it's been a very long, both this video itself here and since I made one. But uh, yeah, we'll see you in the, the next part. We'll be landing in Frankfurt and I'll probably start it off before we start descending. Um, Alright, thank you and again.